Hey everybody, welcome what to we Pops do? React. Uh, what did we do? We made a mistake on our last one. <laughs> what a mistake in a maker. What a mistake in a maker. Led Zeppelin on yes. Elvis. Yes. Uh, whoever it was, they put a, they really enticed you in with the, uh, with the name of the video. And he only said one thing about him having chicks. And then we found this one, which is when Zeppelin met Elvis in May 1974, which I we hope think is, the right one. is the right one. Um... <laughs> Yes, so hopefully we'll just get straight into this one. Yep. So if you it's sat up through the last one going and then typed, you picked the wrong video, we probably did. It was interested anyway on Letterman and getting to hear a bit more about, uh, not from the um, Led Zeppelin. But let's do this one from 1974. Ah, I was nine. Let's do it. Both were handled by Constance West in the talk of in America. Okay. Offered complimentary tickets to Zeppelin. Mmm. Although not a fire for Elvis knew the Zeppelin wearing a new for his young Zeppelin. Alright. Treat me like a fool. Treat me mean and cruel. Look at that. Are you a forum? Wow. Break my faithful heart Fell apart You would love me oh, Effort, isn't it? Yeah. yeah You see rubber gold Darling, I'll be whole Oh, so lonely I finally met their idol you, uh, <laughs> And your paths must have eventually crossed with Elvis Presley Yeah What was that like? Well, spectacular for us, you know, absolutely amazing. He, he was uh, involved with the same agents that we had at the time in the 70s, and uh, he wanted to know who this bunch of guys were who were selling tickets quicker than him. Uh, and we wanted to know who we were too. And, uh, <laughs> and um, so he played the forum in L.A., and I'd seen him a couple of times. I was really so in awe of him as a singer. And... Um, and I loved the way he could send himself up, you know, I mean, when you've been doing, it's a, you know, where our one-trick ponies sing us generally, and if you can't see the humour in it, and right. he did. And a couple of times he made mistakes, and I remember that night at the forum, um, he was doing something like Reconsider Baby or whatever it was, the Lowell Fulson song, yeah. and he stopped it, and he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, we've got Led Zeppelin in here tonight, we've got to get this right. Well, hello there. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, hold it. <laughs> and we can start together, fellas, because we got Led Zeppelin out there and Jimmy Darren and a uh, whole bunch of people, and let's try to look like it's we know right. what we're doing. And I went. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so I mopped the tears away, and uh, <laughs> and we got the nod that we were going to meet him afterwards, and we went to the hotel, and they had the. Um, so we met him after a show and uh, we went to the top floor of the whatever the cheap hotel was a couple of gorillas <laughs> at the elevator and they moved us down <coughs> into this kind of holding station where um, it was a huge, one of those long suites where a door opens into another door, like get smart or whatever it's just on and on and on you know <coughs> and the whole place was full of Sandra D sort of Stella Stevens uh. kind of which is Perfect for me. Yeah. <laughs> a pencil skirt and a beehive, and I've gone from some white stilettos. Out. Um, shows your age, isn't it? Um, and, uh, and then the door opened, and this guy came through the door, and I just, my heart jumped. It was like, whoa! Look at the way he moves, and I mean, he was just going around chairs That's like. <laughs> he was so, so, so cool, and I mean, of course, he wasn't supposed to be cool, but he was. You know, a bit like us, I suppose. It's like a, 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 and he came over to us, and we stood in a circle for about two or three hours talking. And people kept coming by from his retinue, from his entourage, yeah. thinking that he had enough. And, he was going, no, no, no. and we talked for about an hour and a half. And really? it was, but the amazing thing is that um, it was so natural. And it was so funny and there great. There was a rapport right yeah. there immediately. Yeah. And of course, music was the, the, you know, the key. Of your, your question about where did it come from? It came from him, and he still got it. He still was into that whole Delta thing. He, you know, good rocking tonight. All that stuff that got him going in the first place. But he also knew 
and he had a great sense of humor and he knew that, that he was locked in this self-parody. I mean, when the songs dried up, when Lieber and Stoller and Pomus and Schumann, uh, when that kind of whole era of, of creative writing started to wane and things changed, I didn't want to hear Elvis doing a Neil Diamond song. Right. I wanted him, I mean, it was bad enough him coming out of the army and doing Are You Lonesome Tonight? You know, I wanted him to stay wild, to give me all those edges, that kind of, that howl that he had. But, you know, he was just amazing and spectacular. And it was just that he really opened the door to, to my, my whole love of music. And because of him, and because of the choice of his material, I found that. Smiley Lewis, you know, I found all those great singers. And, uh, and now, all these box sets that come out, some of the stuff that he did in the 60s and, uh, was quite so well crafted. Yeah. Hank Garland's guitar playing, the stuff at RCA in Nashville, I mean, the recording of it, and his humor right. in the middle of it all. It's, it's great. So it was a dream come true to meet him, but it was also just by chance that I heard him, and it affected me the way it did. Well, I, I, you know, and I, and I think that's the thing, that the, the more time that goes by, the, the easier it is for people to get confused about how important Elvis's moment was, because, you know, because there's always the feeling that, well, they're not giving enough credit to Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley and Little Richard and so on, which, which is, is true. Right. But Elvis rearranged the mainstream. If Elvis hadn't taken it from how much is that doggy in the window, and, and yeah. turned it into this is mainstream popular music, then Little Richard and Chuck Berry and, and Jerry Lee Lewis would not have had the opportunity to get through it all. Sure, and he was also white, which was oh, that's right. crucial. <laughs> because that gave him the foot in the door that maybe Alan Freed was trying to do yeah. with, with uh, Chuck and, and uh, Bo and all that sort of stuff. But he was, and, and he was just, he was a great looking guy and he actually, that physical representation, when, by the time he got to England, guys would like hit themselves on the head, bang, what's going on? Who's this human being? It was fantastic yeah. in the middle of all that crap. <laughs> you know, there was one uh, shining uh, star. Mentioned to him how you incorporated your music in your career and your uh, young uh, time on stage. Did you yeah, well, he said, well, what, what are you guys, what, what's your music roots? And we, we'd all got the same roots, you know. The sort of blues out of Memphis and Mississippi and stuff. And he said, well, you know, do you do a lot of rehearsals? And of course, Led Zeppelin didn't really show up until the gig, the, the gig was almost over before we actually arrived. <laughs> <laughs> in those days and uh, so we didn't do many sound checks but when we did I used to like to sing in those big arenas yeah. his songs because they sounded even bigger so he said well which song do you like and uh, well, I said well I like loads of them but I do sing this song love me you know treat me like a fool so we talked and talked and then we said goodbye shook hands and said we'd all meet again and I went out in the corridor and was heading for the elevator and suddenly he swings around the door and he says, hey Robert, and he started singing to me and then I started singing to him and then we were all crying. Uh, and <laughs> uh, Mm -hmm. Amazing. Stories. After all those years, you could still see how sort of enthusiastic he was about, you know, the meeting and how it all stayed with him. You know, sometimes you meet people and it's just a meeting, but you could see it really affected um, him and, and what he did going forward. So fair yeah, play. Nice, nice to hear it as well. You know, brilliant. Yeah, it was excellent. Again, yeah, now that we picked the right one. Uh, yes. You know, that's why you got two videos tonight, part one and part Treat two. Me like a fool. Well, we do that every day. Uh -huh. so. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Let us know in the there comments. You go. We like to hear comments, especially yeah. from uh you know, subscribers that maybe have certainly ones that have met Elvis or mm. been to his gigs or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. It's always good to hear your story as well. Yes. Cool. We had some great ones from the last one we did. So thank you very much for uh, all your support. Hope you enjoyed this one if you've never seen it before or if you just like watching it over and over again because it's 
it was interesting so thank you very much if you've got a request for us at the channel you can always head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash brick pops react uh, and click on request a reaction and we'll do a reaction Just for you cool until tomorrow it's a goodbye from me over there goodbye from him brick pops reactor left the building he's a 20th century boy